Hey guys, Stones here. It is a Sunday. That means another recap video of everything that I bought at yard sales and garage sales over this past weekend. This includes purchases from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then not from Sunday because there was nothing new out there today on my way home from the gym. So I didn't buy anything today. And um, But this is everything from the prior three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I think it was a pretty good weekend, and I'll explain why here in a minute. But let's go over some of the stuff really quickly here. Um, Thursday started off pretty slow. Um, didn't find much. Um, paid um, $5 total for this pottery from Mexico, Tijuana. It's Aztec, uh, Mayan influence. I kind of looked up similar pieces we're looking at $20, $25, and then I got this bag of mini sports pennants. Um, so, like, there's, you know, they're football ones, and they're kind of in poor condition. I really didn't look at the condition of them. They're, it looks like they use glue or some sort of substance on the back to hang them up. So they're kind of damaged on the back, but those all tend to do pretty well. I'll probably sell them for a, as a set maybe $15, $20 on that. And then the only other thing that I bought on Thursday was this Xbox One. I paid $40 total for the console and two controllers and the power, the right power cords and everything. The reason why I bring this up is because in my last video, if you watch my last video, I picked up an Xbox One um, for only $25 and then for an additional $5 for the lady gave me all the games that she had for sale, which I think if I would have bought those individually would have cost me like $10 or $12, which I thought was a great deal because one of those games alone will pay for everything. One of those games alone would be worth the $30 that I paid for everything. The problem, though, was when I went to go test the unit, I realized that, one, the controller wasn't working for some reason. Thankfully, I had an extra one in my inventory. And they didn't give me the correct power supply. They gave me a normal cord. Um, and all the Xboxes use like a power brick. It's an external power supply. So it's got a big brick attached to it. And I wasn't really paying attention to the bag of accessories when they handed it to me. Or, or I would have said something. So luckily I had an extra one of those as well. But then now I'm trying to figure out did I pay too much for that. Now that I had to provide my own controller. And uh, power supply. But. Probably not, because again, those games paid for everything. Um, later on, this is a couple days later, or actually the next day I pay, I got a PS3. Um, paid, I think, I want to say it was $50 for this. Maybe $40, but maybe it was $50. Um, she originally had a sign-on that said, whatever the price was, $40 or $50, or best offer. And then I offered her like $10 less. And uh, she said, actually, I was just about to take that sign off because I actually brought out more games because she had games that went with it, but not this many. And she was just bringing out more games to go with it. And she goes, with the extra games, I think it's worth the full price that I'm asking. And I said, well, yeah, I got to agree with you on that one. So I paid full price for this, whether it's 40 or 50, I can't remember now. But PS3s always do well for me. And then I got her to throw in this burberry fragrance bag it's brand new with tags even still has a little protecting paper around the zippers and stuff like that this bag alone goes for 25 30 dollars so because she threw that in i had no problem paying full price for the um for the ps3 and again there was a bunch of video games these are pretty common games for the ps3 nothing special in here but they're all definitely worth about ten dollars a piece on average so again, that was a good deal. Now, a little hint, I'm gonna move this aside. If you can find a PS3 with four ports right there instead of two, that one is backwards compatible with PS2. And those are worth twice as much as the ones with just two ports, which are not backwards compatible. Now, I would have been all over this regardless, but if it was a four port one that was backwards compatible, that would have been way, way worth the price. Would, would have been worth twice the price. So, because I think those sell for about $200. Um, paid 50 cents for this Thomas the Train VHS. I pick these up whenever I can find them. I've talked about these before in past videos. If you can find the ones that are either narrated by Ringo Starr or George Carlin, they're worth picking up for about a buck or less. Now, if you can get a, a set of five of them by the same narrator or like a group of 10 of them that's a mixture, 
easily $100, something like that. So I pick these up whenever I can, and I won't go to explaining why these have value because of that, but long story short, when they switch everything to DVD, I think they never got the rights to continue to use the narration by these two people. And therefore, the only way you can get these episodes is uh, on VHS. So that's the reason why. Uh, picked up these padded envelopes for five bucks. Whenever I can find shipping supplies on the cheap, I pick them up because shipping supplies are really expensive. So there's um, this was normally a 20 pack. It's an open pack. There's only 16 left. So that's about 30 cents a piece, which is very, very reasonable for padded envelopes. Plus, they're pretty cool. I don't know. I, I couldn't pass them up. They were cool. Um, I'm going to go over some of the stuff here in a minute because there's a whole thing with this. So, um, went to my last and only yard sale, I think, yesterday. Um, picked up some of these books. They were a quarter a piece or six for a dollar. I only found four, so I paid a quarter a piece or a dollar. Um, most of these are kind of worthless. I was kind of going on, 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 on a whim. Um, using my senses to, to figure out what might be good ones. And they're all pretty worthless except for this copy of If I Ran the Circus. This is one of the banned titles by Dr. Seuss. If you remember, if you don't know, a couple of years ago, his publishing company, his estate, decided to discontinue about eight different titles uh, because they felt they were not politically correct, that they were racist, um, in some ways, so they decided to quit uh, publishing those titles, which shot up the value of those books. Um, they've come down a bit. I think the hype and the excitement of that has died off, especially since eBay does not allow, allow you to sell those books on. They'll they'll take your listing down if you have them. So, because uh, I've tried once and they took my listing down. So this is the first time I have found this title, and ironically, I found it again. Uh, earlier in the week. I found two copies in one weekend. So um, there's one called Mulberry Street that I keep on coming across. I think I have like three copies of that. I'm just trying to uh, grab a bunch of them up for my collection. And for, I think over time, if they continued this ban and, and they continue to discontinue publishing them, um, I think um, over time they're going to get more rare and uh, more valuable. So that being said, here's the big purchase. So in my town, we have an Eagles, an Order of Eagles, which is kind of like the Moose Lodge and all those different things involved with veterans and stuff. And every year, they hold a two-day rummage sale. And it's to raise money for all their different charities and stuff like that. This is the third year in a row I've been to it, but the first time that ever I ever got there on the first day. For some reason, I never find out about this sale until the second day until after the first day occurred. So the second day I show up and I kind of feel like I'm, I'm, I'm getting the scraps, I'm getting the leftovers, and it's really reasonable. On the second day, it's always been to fill a bag for five bucks. Now, I don't know if that's because they're just trying to get rid of everything um, and they're, they're just doing that to just move as much stuff as possible. So I've always wondered what it would be like on the first day. Do they have, is there stuff I'm missing? Is there a lot of great stuff that that's, could, I could have got if I would have known about it. And how do they price things on the first day? I always wondered that. Well, this year I was able to go on the first day. And I had found out about it days prior. And it started at 8 o'clock, which is prior to any of the yard sales and garage sales that were happening that day. So thankfully there was no competition. I didn't have to pick or choose over one over the other. Uh, so I could go there and then hit up yard sales and garage sales later on. Also, it was going to be raining. It had been raining, and they hold it in a, um, a pavilion that's covered, so no worried about the weather there. And it's actually starting to rain now. So I'm going to do this really quick. So I went up, and um, there was a table um, where you paid for everything, and basically a lady would sit there, and she would tell you, this is how much I went for what you have. And it's always, always reasonable, extremely reasonable. And I'm going to show you everything that I grabbed. She only wanted to charge me $30. And I, I looked at her and she goes, she goes, just, you know, she thought I was offended. And I was because it was way too little. Um, I said, no, you're going to take $60 for this. And she was pretty happy that I, that I offered that. And I think that was still actually too little, but on the first day, because I went two days. So the first day I picked up 
four boxes of this Bostitch bulk pack. Um, this is like roofing supplies, I guess. It's 500 caps and 500 staples. Um, those go for, I already have these listed, um, $75 a box. So I have four boxes, that's $300 right there. Then I picked up this box, there's 10 of them, of just the caps only. Um, and there's a thousand, I think, I can't remember. And I have those listed two packs for $35. So I've got 10 of them, so five times that, that's another $150 plus. Um, picked up this ALF plush, I don't know what that's worth. Um, picked up this pineapple plush that's going to go to um, Kevin the Commonwealth Picker. Um, I thought this was a vintage toy. It's actually a new Jurassic uh, Park toy, and it looks like it's broken. It's missing a part, so that's probably going to get thrown away. Ben 10, um, an action figure with a vehicle. I typically grab these up when I find them and then list them together as a big collection. The last Ben 10 collection that I listed sold for way over $100, something like that. This purse looked interesting to me. I don't know, know much about purse name brands, but I looked up this brand Chala, and it seems like they do this kind of cut and paste um, leather designs, um, 3D designs and stuff. And these, the sell-through rate on these are pretty good. I'm probably thinking $25 to $30 on that purse. Um, and then a second copy of I Ran the Circus. This is a better copy than this one. Um, this is actually the, um, oh, this is the Coles Cares one. So it's a newer version, so it's, it, but it's, it still has value. And again, it's one of those titles that um, I wanted to get uh, because it's one of the banned titles. Um, I think that's all I, well, I think I picked up this camera on the first day. And then I went back uh, for a second round on Saturday thinking, did I miss anything? Because I kind of rushed it, and there was so much stuff. And again, are the prices cheaper um, the second time around? And, and they were. So I basically filled a bag for 5 bucks. And so for the extra $5, and I'm just noticing that I missed something else here, but I'll, go, I'll get back to that because that's kind of the, the big daddy find. So um, I picked up this ice maker. This is a installation kit for a replacement ice maker. This is actually... Um, uh, factory Frigidaire, I think. Um, it looked like there's, like, some of the stuff has price tags on it, and I think what ends up happening is people have their own yard sales or garage sales, and then if it doesn't sell, they give it to the Eagles to sell at this big rummage sale that they have. So, um, so this had $5 on it. That's not what I paid. The camera was a buck. I didn't pay for that either. I didn't, that's not what I paid. Of course, I paid a total price for everything. So, that being said, this ice maker, it's a four Frigidaire, it's open box, worth about $40. Um, I picked up a bag of jewelry, I don't know what's in there, but I threw it in the bag because, again, everything, fill a bag for five bucks. Here's a beer tap, um, this is in pretty poor condition, so probably not going to list that, probably going to donate that, throw it away, whatever. Um, got this digital answering machine, this Con Air, it's brand new in the box. People still use answer machines, if you believe it. Um, and because they don't make them anymore, there's value to them. This one's not so much, but brain in the box, I'm thinking 20 bucks on that. And then I grabbed all these cups. These are pewter cups. Um, these are all from Germany. And they're actually marked Zinn. And I didn't know what Zinn was, and it's just basically the word for pewter in German. But these cups actually have value. 15, 20 bucks a piece, and there's what, two, four, six, seven of them, so easily $100 if not more. Um, don't think this is silver, but maybe it is. I have to keep on looking. This is a um, Seder cup or a Passover cup for Jewish feasts, things like that. Uh, so I grabbed that. Um, and then again, this is from the first day, and I get got to get back to this because this was the uh, best find of the weekend. Um, this was part of that original $60 um, at the Eagles uh, fundraiser rummage sale. This is Bear in the Big Blue House. It's a talking um, plush doll. It's brand new in the box. Uh, the box is kind of damaged, but that's okay. This figure, or this plush, has sold in the past for upwards of $200 new in the box. Um, I'm thinking right now with the damaged packaging or whatever, maybe 125 to 150, that $200 was really the top of the market. And there was only one that sold for that price. So, 
Um, Bear in the Big Blue House is one of those uh, licenses that actually does really well. I've sold other things, uh, other plush and stuff that have done really well for me. And this is actually the first thing that I grabbed at that, that rummage sale with the Eagle. So that's going to pay for this whole purchase twice over. So, you know, I paid $60, but I felt like I paid up, but I really didn't. So there you go. There's the recap for the weekend. Uh, thanks for watching and take care. See ya.